The most difficult aspect of rocket development is the engine. That's what propels the rocket and it's very critical to get it right. In other fields like human anatomy, our internal organs make us function. However, the most important organ in our body is the heart. If our heart stopped pumping blood, we may likely be lifeless. Same goes for the Starship. The Raptor engines make it a functional rocket. Unfortunately, the Starship Raptor engine is having problems, and SpaceX seems not to get everything right. Why do SpaceX engineers always crack their head to make the engine super efficient, and what is the most difficult parts of the Raptor engines that is cumbersome to manufacture? Stick around to discover the hidden answers in today's episode of Tech SpaceX. In everyday life, many problems happen unexpectedly, most of which comes as a shock, but in the cause of grinding to make life meaningful, we have to go beyond planned bargain and set higher objectives to overcome any challenges that arise. Same goes for how businesses operate, and even SpaceX founded by the famous richest billionaire, Elon Musk it not left out. SpaceX is a private business that contributes a ton to the U.S. economy, but what's sad about running a company is that the product may not be accepted by the market after mass production or the key driver of the company may be in shambles. The prime mover of SpaceX and the Starship project is the Raptor 2 engine. Designing the Raptor engine to function without flaws is a challenge SpaceX must win, and until they win, Elon's intention of sending NASA's astronauts to the moon, or his dream to occupy Mars with over one million human colony will only be delusional. Elon Musk has already revealed the secret of rocket engine design to the press, saying that designing a rocket is tough, and you will need to read tons of engineering books. You will also have a good understanding of equations and physics, but designing its engine is a different ball game. Hence, just developing a rocket doesn't make you a successful rocket engineer, rather building a production line that builds many Raptor engines and producing volumes of rocket parts is super difficult. So, what makes the design of the Starship very cumbersome is the use of 33 Raptor engines which are all assembled beneath one booster. But if you think that just assembling the engines under the booster and testing them is a job well done, then you will be wrong 100 times because a lot goes down in the case of heat interaction between each Raptor engine and since we are dealing with high temperature above 1300 Fahrenheit, heat transfer properties of the materials used in Raptor 2 design should also be considered. What are the characteristics of metals used in production of the Raptor parts? When Elon Musk was questioned about types of metal properties or alloys used in the production of Raptor metals, he briefly delved into the explanation of complexities in building the Raptor engine, particularly with respect to alloys capable of surviving the intense conditions inside a rocket engine, he said. SX-300 and soon SX-500 are kind of a modern version of Inconel superalloys. High strength at temperature, extreme oxidation resistance. Needed 4800 atmosphere, hot, oxygen rich turbo pump on Raptor rocket engine. What Elon said may not be well understood, let's break it down for the layperson. First and foremost, the SX300 500 in the statement refers to some sort of custom SpaceX material, given that SX is a frequent shorthand for SpaceX used in the enthusiast community. However, in reality, it was quickly discovered that the requirements must describe for the material include high strength at temperature versus extreme oxidation resistance, which are the exact same qualities of single crystal superalloys, extremely advanced metal formulations also notated as SC or SX. So, this is a clear view that SpaceX will have no choice than to rely on SX alloys as critical materials for Raptor production. Again, the term single crystal superalloys simply means small amounts of exotic elements which are employed to ensure truly unusual crystal formation in metal structures. In the case of SX alloys, the best outcome expected is a monolithic metal structure that effectively has no visible grain. Talking about the grains, we refer to the interstitial properties formed to make up the material. A good example is wood grain, but in this case, it's metal grain. The resulting metal would be a huge monolithic crystal, meaning it will be fine and uniform down to a near atomic level. So, at least no grains will exist in the material. 
and talking about the SX super alloys, they are not strange in the engineering world since they are already used regularly for industrial applications requiring the ability to reliably operate in extremely corrosive high pressure, high temperature environments for long periods of time, most frequently seen in gas turbines for energy generation and airplane propulsion. So, for Musk, his company decided to take those alloys a step further, developing its own SX300 and SX500 iterations for the purpose of building a reliable, robust turbopump for the Raptor propulsion system. This is done to achieve the greatest possible efficiency, Raptor's turbopump will run oxygen-rich, meaning that the inherently imperfect combustion process will lean towards excess oxygen in the exhaust, rather than excess methane. More so, from the statement again, the Inconel metal material is a type of high-performance, corrosion-resistant nickel alloy that is commonly used in aerospace and rocket design applications. It is known for its excellent strength and resistance to high temperatures and unfriendly environments. Some of its favorable properties that make it a good choice for use in the SpaceX Raptor engine include its high melting point, excellent corrosion resistance, and excellent mechanical properties. SpaceX already achieved an ambitious move to produce its own Inconel metal, which is used in the development of its Raptor 2 engines. Unfortunately for SpaceX, a private company funded by mostly investors may not be all round capable to fund the production of the Inconel metal from scratch, since it is very expensive to manufacture its properties. To prove this, can you remember last year when Elon Musk warned that SpaceX could face a genuine risk of bankruptcy from Starship engine production? He made it clear in an email when he wrote that, unfortunately the Raptor production crisis is much worse than it seemed. A few weeks ago, as we've dug into the issues following the exiting of prior senior management, they have unfortunately turned out to be far more severe than was reported there is no way to sugarcoat this. The senior manager had abruptly digressed from production goal to plummet the Raptor output, and that actually caused a glitch in the performance of the Raptor 2 engine at the testing phase. The manager responsible for the then Raptor production downturn is likely Lee Rosen, the former SpaceX senior VP of propulsion. His departure showcased the intense pressure on the engine's development given the key role it plays and Starship's success. Not only did Lee left the company then, but also Senior Director of Mission and Launch Operations Rick Lim joined to take the exit door. Currently, SpaceX's Raptor engine production is now led by Jacob McKenzie, who's been with the company for over six years. But his presence doesn't seem to show any improvement. Another problem is that SpaceX just switched from the building of formal version of the Raptor engine to Raptor 2. This move again is a critical one in the sense that SpaceX had to employ some reliable standard in the Raptor 2 engine during production and that eats up financial capacity of the company towards the goal of producing over 100 Raptor 2 per week and it is a critical factor. However, Rocket engine production is one of the most complex tasks to ever embark on to have a better understanding. Let's explain. Once the fuel inside the engine has combusted, it is converted from liquid into gas and creates a great amount of pressure in the chamber, but the nozzle serves as the most sensitive part of the rocket. The nozzle of the Raptor 2 engine is the final stage of the engine and its job is to take all pressure and shoot it out to maximize thrust. To make the nozzle chamber do its job very effectively, it has to be designed so that pressure of the gas matches the surrounding air pressure as it leaves the nozzle. Contrarily, if the pressure is higher than the surrounding pressure at this point, it will spill over the edges and that will make the rocket thrust to be drastically reduced, and of course you know that the upward speed of the rocket will also reduce. However, when rocket flow through the atmosphere, the air pressure drops. That means that no matter how the nozzle shapes, the engine will lose efficiency as it gets higher and higher. But this may not be the all-round case of the Starship second stage, because it just sits on the booster that carries it into space and doesn't get used until it's already out of the thickest part of the atmosphere. Hence, we can't say much about what happens to the Starship second stage since SpaceX hasn't yet lifted the Starship into orbit and fire the engines attached to the second stage. However, the rocket industry is not easy for all. The only difference is that the difficulties are never the same. And SpaceX will continue to seek solutions until Starship lands on the moon and then Mars. Do you think the Raptor 2 engine can successfully fire up the Starship to the moon? And if you want to know how SpaceX new Raptor engines work, 
Just click on the video.